Hey there YouTube, it's Kurt here, and today I wanted to bring you a list of my top five guitars of all time. And really this is a list that is completely subjective. It's not meant to be a list that's supposed to describe to all of you what the objectively best guitars of all time are. I think once you reach a certain point as a guitarist, there's the argument of just being better than another guitarist who has already made it in the music industry is just kind of retarded. I feel like many of those lists, they're just destructive to the idea of artistry. There is no logical reason to compare Slash to Steve Vai. It's just kind of stupid. These are just guitars that have personally affected me as a musician and uh, as an artist. And I feel like they're all very um, interesting to talk about. And I think a lot of you will find a lot of interest in a lot of these discussions because I feel like there's such um, a unique aspect to every single uh, guitarist that is on this list that in the way these guitars affect other people. And uh, there's just so much of an endless discussion when it comes to uh, guitar playing style. And I feel like that's a very interesting thing um, to think about. So without further ado, I'm going to go through the list and hopefully you guys enjoy the list. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. At number five, we have Justin Hawkins from The Darkness. Now, if you're an American, you might not know that much about uh, Justin and the Darkness, but they had hit um, about a decade ago um, in I Believe in a Thing Called Love, and it was an international hit. Um, so he is the lead guitarist from that band. Um, and one thing I really love about this band in general is that uh, they really have a lot of fun solos. Like, they really kind of brought back the whole, uh, I guess, cock rock genre that a lot of people love. And that's one thing you don't really see in it nowadays. And uh, I felt like they were really good at in incorporating um, multiple styles within their solos. And, uh, yeah, Justin was really, um, really unique, and the band itself was really unique. And that's one thing I really loved about the band in general. Um, it doesn't rub everybody the same way, but for me, it was something very special. Um, and with that, I have to mention uh, their other guitarist, who is the brother of Justin, uh, Dan Hawkins. So he will get an honorable mention for this one because he is a very, very solid um, rhythm guitar player that has many creative riffs. At number four, we have none other than Eddie Van Halen from, well, the band Van Halen. Yeah. Um, nothing really compares to Eddie Van Halen when we're talking about him because he did, um, well, he just did things on the guitar that no one before him really experimented with much. And, uh, if people were doing it at his time, uh, like, really, they were among the first of his era. So you can't really say that he copied anybody in particular, but more that they developed around the same time. It would be very difficult to say that Eddie Van Halen copied a lot of his moves from other guitar players. He obviously knew his blue scales very well, um, but he just did them with um, such lightning fast speed and combined them with certain bends and certain harmonics that a lot of guitar players really didn't experiment with before. And at such a high overdrive, it was just something very, very cool. And... Uh, yeah, a lot of players have spent a lot of their time trying to mimic his style. And to me, it was something very fun. It's something I try to incorporate um, within my own style. Um, and I think that he's just really a staple when you're just trying to, I guess, discuss any sort of rounded guitar player. At number three, we have another bit of an oddball here, and it's not somebody that a lot of people really reference too much, but it's a guitar player that I think has influenced me personally a lot, and that's uh, Ray Toro from My Chemical Romance. And you hear a lot of his older playing style really on the third album, the uh, the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance, and uh, like that to me, that's one of my favorite albums. It's within my top three favorite albums of all time, and I just can't really do a list without mentioning Ray Toro because I feel like that album was such a great uh, rock opera in general that, uh, yeah, I can't help but try to mimic some of that style. And uh, when mentioning Ray Toro, a lot of people uh, say make comparisons between him and uh, Brian May from Queen. And I really can't get away without mentioning Brian May because I do, um, I feel like I'm more influenced by Ray Toro because it's a little bit wilder of a style. Um, but I do love Brian May and the work of Queen as Queen is one of my favorite bands. Um, but it's it seems more appropriate for me to mention Brian May as an honorable mention. Um, but yeah, Ray Toro is just a very unique style of his own, even if he doesn't hasn't done that many albums um, with any band work. I think he has definitely left his mark 
among the guitar community uh, w- within a time where guitar playing really isn't as popular in the mainstream as it was at one time. And I think that's something very special. At number two, we have John Frusciante. And uh, Fr- Frusciante, obviously, was with the or was with the Red Hot Chili Peppers and left recently, but he was with them for a very long time and did lots of lots of work with them. And uh, yeah, he's done so much work with the Chili Peppers. He's done so much work on his own. And uh, there's a lot of good music that he actually puts out on his own that is still very good. And what's really unique about Frusciante is, um, yeah, his style of slap, um, well, combination of rhythm, um, rhythm clean playing, and uh, combined with sort of jazzy chords, it's it's very hard to even explain his style because it's something that's so much that's his own in a sense um, that really hasn't been messed around with in the past 20, 30 years by many other guitar players. Um, I think he was highly influenced um, by a lot of earlier players in the 50s and the 60s, probably very influenced by uh, Jimi Hendrix, um, and taking Hendrix and putting it into a more uh, clean style in some sorts. Um, Obviously, like the amounts that he has purely done simply with rhythm parts alone i think that's something that's been very unique and um he's very he highly emphasizes the rhythm sections and the melodies and uh, how it incorporates with a song and incorporates with other parts and i think that's something that uh, a lot of other guitar players don't really focus on um so i think with if you're trying to become a well-rounded rhythm player at least you'll at least reference some john frusciante and uh just look through the albums that he has helped create over the years and it's very clear that he has done something very special with his career. Um, and, and he can also really, like, he can shred leads. Like, his leads are very impressive as well. And uh, that's something that's totally not to be ignored. But I feel like the very, the strongest point of Frusciante is some of his uh, rhythm playing and a lot of his, yeah, I guess, riffs that have sustained throughout uh, entire entire verses and entire songs. And uh, that's been that's been really cool to hear from him, and from the Chili Peppers. And then number one, we have none other than Jimmy Page himself. Now, a lot of people do criticize uh, Jimmy Page. Obviously, if you're a rock and roller, um, not everything you're going to do is going to be perfect. Um, but there were allegations against him uh, with a certain underage girl when he was a lot younger. Um, now, I think that music is a little bit. Uh, separated from your morality as a person. I feel like you can be a terrible person and make great music, and I feel like a lot of people would make that claim. I'm not saying for sure that he's a terrible person, but there may have been things in his past that uh, he possibly needs the answer for. But with that out of the way, I'm going to talk about uh, just his playing style in general. Like, when you talk about a pioneer, really, in the rock music scene... Um, yeah, a lot of things, again, a lot of things he did, he did before anybody else. And a lot of things are built upon his play style and his interpretation of the blues. Now, a lot of these other players that I mentioned, they've really drawn a lot from, uh, Jimmy Page and his style and his interpretation of the blues. And, uh, there's a lot of innovation there. Like when he did the solo, when he did the solo, um, and played his guitar, like he was playing a cello, um, Honestly, I felt like it was kind of annoying, and it didn't really sound very great because, you know, you're not supposed to use horsehair on a guitar. But, nonetheless, it's innovative, and I feel like he did a lot of innovative things. Like, when he ben- started bending the string behind, um, like, on your headstock to get a, give it a very unique sound, that's something you don't really hear before that era. Um, that's honestly very, very cool. And uh, just with the certain speed and dexterity that he was able to play with in his younger years, um, with the blues, like, it's something that really, again, was never heard before. Um, like, even, like, obviously Hendrix had this thing going on, and uh, I think he was drawing heavily from Hendrix. Um, but as you develop, you're obviously going... When you do a run on a guitar, it's going to sound completely different. I think uh, Jimi Hendrix is a very emotional player, but he wasn't as technically gifted as a lot of the other guitar players out there. Um, so 
nonetheless, uh, with all else in mind, I think Jimmy Page has been uh, very influential on me as well. So yeah, there's nothing to be taken from the number one spot here. Is all these guitar players have been influential to me in their own way, and I'm gonna make a couple on honorable mentions. I've already made a couple honorable mentions. I've already mentioned Brian May, and I've already mentioned uh, Dan Hawkins as the rhythm player. And as I was making this, um, well, top five sounds really good, um, but honestly, like it should be kind of a top six because kind of tied. Um, well, I don't even want to consider this in order, but I think it's fair to mention Phil X. Um, I think Phil X is a great freaking guitarist. And like, what's I think what's unmatched about Phil X and why he's so influential on me is that I feel like this, the, sheer, the sheer aggression that he plays with sometimes on the runs that he does, I think that's something that's unparalleled. Um, like he has the dexterity, he has the speed, he has the knowledge, um, and he's able to play, um, with emotion on certain solos. And I think he's a very good composer. Um, and he does a lot of writing, but what's really special about him is when he's really, really able to just take out his aggression on his guitar. Um, like if you want to watch some of his videos, I think I can post, uh, a couple of his videos that I think are really just amazing in terms of what he's able to do. Um, but it's just something so raw and so pure, and I think he just doesn't really care that much about fitting into a certain genre or a certain box like when he's playing. I think he's just really doing something that he really cares about, and I think that's something that's really, really special, and that's really inspirational. Um, so yeah, Phil X, he's, he's on the list. He's the sixth guy on my top five list. So if that doesn't make you happy, I don't really care because this is YouTube, and you shouldn't take it too seriously. But yeah, I have one more honorable mention to make, and uh, my honorable mention is Slash. Now, the reason he's not on the list in general is because I feel like um, his niche, I guess, um, his like he was very unique in playing the harmonic minor and incorporating that into his solos. Um, I feel like his like his blues playing is amazing, obviously, um, but it doesn't it didn't hit me in the same way that other guitars uh, like to play. Um, yeah, within the harmonic minor, it's just not something I'm drawn to, and it's not something I play often. So that's why I can't name him as being super influential to me or my play style, even though I love a lot of his work. Um, so yeah, you can have your own opinions on that. <laughs> this is my list, guys. I'm going to cut it off here. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you like the video, give it a like. If you like my, uh, channel in general, you can subscribe to the channel, all that YouTube stuff. Um, but yeah, just... Again, take this with a grain of salt. This is just what's influential to me. And I just wanted to have a general discussion about music and how music influences other players in general. And, uh, yeah, I don't think it's really fair to put a lot of uh, guitarists like in a pure ranking of who's the best. Because when you when you get so good, there is no best after a certain, certain line. All of it comes down to preference. And... Uh, that's that's really just what it is. There are certain things you can point to, like speed, dexterity, blah, blah, blah. But who cares? There's such an emotional factor into it to, after someone gets so good at guitar. So I don't, really don't care about really um, any other arguments beyond that of who's the best. I just think they're stupid. So if you have a problem with me thinking it's stupid, um, this is YouTube and the Internet. So make your opinion known to the entire world. So all right, see you guys.